Initially, when the coronavirus spiked, it made sense for states to actually shut down borders to be able to shore up their health resources. That time has now potentially passed, yet states refuse to open borders, driven purely by fear-mongering and potentially politics. Surely having localized lockdowns and in regions should be sufficient. My question is, what is the point of having citizenship or residency in a country if you don't have the ability to freely move within it or to trade within it? And you run a number of small businesses, don't you? I'm involved with a number of businesses, yes. Okay. Tanya de Jong, how do you respond? Yeah, well, I totally agree with you. If you deny freedom of movement, you're effectively denying nationhood. And as I said, we might as well just go and become separate states. But I agree with you as well that we just need to focus on hotspots, on protecting the elderly and the vulnerable beautifully and caringly with love in our hearts because they need our care. And focusing on tracking, testing, quarantining effectively practising COVID safe and letting everyone else go back to their lives and work. Do, do you accept, though, that closing borders, though, has protected vulnerable communities, mm -hmm. particularly in mm -hmm. places like the Northern Territory, Western Australia, parts of remote Queensland? I, I do accept that. Absolutely it has. But now we've reached a stage where we should be opening up and there's... But, but what, what evidence do you base that on? Because Melbourne... Well, we only it, have a handful of cases. Uh, Melbourne apart, we only have a handful of active cases in the whole of Australia and we're not opening up any, uh, any of our borders, pretty uh, much. Omar, <laughs> in Western Australia, I know you have a very different perspective on this. Uh, how popular is the border closure there? Uh, Mark McGowan is, I think, our most popular leader ever, and there's no doubt there is broad community support for the very strong uh, border restrictions here in WA. It has protected uh, WA, both our vulnerable communities, uh, including those in the northwest, but also our uh, very important mining sector, which Mark McGowan was pointing out pretty, pretty loudly over the last couple of days, has been protected by his uh, border closure. I, I don't think, though, that this is the only way. And uh, unfortunately, the outbreak in Victoria just underlined or kind of proved Mark McGowan right. Uh, but if we can get to a state where the Victorian uh, situation is under control, back to uh, very small numbers or no community spread, then I think there's a legitimate uh, question that needs to be asked of the state premiers as to, as to how they can still justify the borders uh, being closed, because there's no doubt there is a negative effect on people, on families, on the movement of workers, on the movement of health workers even, uh, across the borders. Uh, but you know, on the flip side, WA hasn't had 3,000 healthcare workers uh, being infected with COVID like Victoria. We haven't had over 500 elderly people die uh, in, in nursing homes. So the borders have protected us and they can't be just discarded because they're inconvenient. We've got to really look to cooperate, get some strong agreement between the states. Uh, and that means trust, trusting in other states' quarantine arrangements, in other states' contact tracing, because if one state uh, does the wrong thing, the rest of the country gets let down. So At the a... moment, I don't see that trust there. So on that point, Deputy Prime Minister, can the other states trust Victoria's contact tracing now? Well, let's wait and see. At the moment, we haven't been able to do that. New South Wales well, has I mean, this led is the not way a let's for, wait and for see tracking situation. and tracing. This, well, this is a matter uh, of life and well, death for the, many Australians. The number Australians. of cases for Victoria was at its lowest point today for some weeks, and the, their public health officials have to do that uh, tracking and tracing. That is the key, as Dr Omar but, has but just said, to making to sure... Is, can to we making trust sure, their Well, we haven't been tracing. able to so far, and we've had that outbreak because of uh, uh, the security guards who did the wrong thing. We had that outbreak because of uh, a family who gathered in too large numbers, and we had that outbreak in Victoria because of a protest rally. Now, appreciate that... Sorry, uh, what's the evidence of the protest rally leading to the outbreak? Well, there were three confirmed cases from one of those protest rallies... That, uh, and are the, you saying that's led to the to the outbreak? Well, now? it has. It didn't help the situation when, but, but, when sorry, the second wave. Sorry, you're drawing a link that I'm not sure is substantial. Well, when the second wave occurred, they they were the three reasons that were given. It was the uh, it was the security failure. It was the uh, it was the family that gathered in too large numbers, and uh, and people who attended a a rally. Uh, 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 were said I'm to not be, sure there's any actual evidence that the Black Lives Matter protests led to this outbreak, though. Well. Well, that, that's what, that's what uh, was being said at the time. But do you accept that you were wrong in saying that just now? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think people should be protesting, actually, at the moment. I'm sorry. Uh, in I'm any way, shape or I'm form. I'm just testing you on a fact, though. You have put forward 
that the Black Lives Matter protest in Melbourne <coughs> led to this outbreak. I do not believe that's supported by fact. There were a number of cases of people that had COVID there, but there is no evidence well, supporting that that, that led and, to and this. And given the fact that the public sorry, health officials need, uh, you're, at you're uh, in Victoria, their tracking and tracing was and not to... what it should be, uh, who knows? They, do they don't that... know themselves. So I'm if sorry. there were people at that rally with COVID-19, and that has since been proven that they did have COVID-19, when but they went to that, that protest, to they the... should not have been at that protest, and nor should the that protest that have did been... did not lead at, to this outbreak. Have, and, and, you know, police resources have been used uh, un, un, unjustly. They should have been doing what their job is, and that is to ensure that law and order is being kept, rather than have to attend and, uh, and babysit a group of protesters who shouldn't have been protesting in the first place. Um, uh, I think um, this uh, is actually quite an important uh, point, though, with respect, Deputy Prime Minister. The, we, we, we do know what happened in Victoria, and we know that the processes around hotel quarantine failed, that the virus was then able to get into uh, some community groups, yes. and then the contact tracing and the public health response was too slow, the lockdowns and restrictions were too slow, and the virus got out into the aged care sector, into the healthcare sector, and into the community in extraordinary numbers. Now, that is the lesson that the rest of the states need to learn. Yep. These restrictions protect us. Uh, Omar, is there any evidence that the Black Lives Matter protests led to this outbreak in Victoria? Uh, no, I'm certainly not aware of any evidence that the Black Lives uh, Matter protest uh, resulted in the outbreak in Victoria. Uh, but I would agree that congregating in large numbers at the moment does not make sense. Uh, but we shouldn't be hiding from the real causes of the Victorian uh, uh, pandemic uh, uh, outbreak. Christina Keneally. I'm just a bit gobsmacked at what I've just heard from the Deputy Prime Minister uh, trying to assert that this uh, second wave in Victoria is linked directly to the Black Lives Matter protest. I mean, that is just alternate facts, Trumpism, make up your own reality right there. There's no evidence for that. But you know what would really help the contact tracing in Victoria? If we had an app that worked. This COVID safe app from the Commonwealth was supposed to be our ticket to freedom. It was supposed to be our way out. It hasn't yet found one unique contact that wasn't already found by manual tracking and tracing. The New South Wales Opal card has done a better job at tracking coronavirus than this COVID safe app. And what I'm really frustrated by here is that, you know, we have a Commonwealth government that is responsible for the app. They're responsible for aged care. They're responsible for mental health. And yet, all I've heard from the Deputy Prime Minister tonight is, well, we're working on it, and it's probably some Labor Premier's fault. It, we are so far into this, and, and I think a lot of Australians who are getting frustrated and angry and wanting to go out and protest, whether it's about wanting freedom of movement or, or whatever else it is, is because they feel like there's no clear strategy or plan here in place. How do we get to a COVID normal? I think we all accept. We're not going back to normal normal. But, you know, I'm glad Omar named it tonight that some states are working on an elimination strategy. Hmm. When we started this, we were all kind of in this together and we were all going for suppression and flatten the curve. And then somewhere along the line, the process of national cabinet broke down. There was never a national strategy. It's become this this meandering mess. You know, you remember the Prime Minister was asked, let me say this, the Prime Minister was asked, are we going for elimination or suppression? He said, oh, we're somewhere, we're going to be somewhere between New Zealand and Sweden. Well, what does that mean? No wonder premiers seem to have taken a decision, they want elimination, and their public is really supporting them. Uh, when our veterans couldn't attend Anzac Day ceremonies and they did the right thing by having a candle or a light at the end of their driveways, I think they showed the example of what to do when you want to make a public point. And I don't no think any of the protests that, that fo have followed since then, when people wanted to make a public point, good on them, that's, that's why 102,000 names are on the War Memorial, so that people died, so that people could make a public point, so that no we could live in, in freedom and democracy. Just no on the 15th of March, when the Prime Minister initially suggested that we should protect the vulnerable and the elderly, and that we should focus on hot spots to flatten the curve. Mm. Why has that changed all of a sudden without telling anyone? Like, we're, 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 how come we've not been told that eradication... Of course, it's become obvious to us, 
by what's happening in Victoria. Like we can't eradicate until we get the vaccine. <laughs> we, we just need to yeah. we need to move on at this point. Yeah. And I just need to stress that DHSS in Victoria does say that there is no link between uh, those at the uh, protest, the Black Lives Matter protest, with COVID and the current uh, outbreak. Okay, well I'll, I'll accept that, but people shouldn't be protesting. Okay. People should not be protesting.